adult talk. Pornography. Pornography. Right, let me tell you where the word reason comes from. Greek. Greek. Pornaya. Pornaya uh, has a connotation of adultery, but it has a meaning of having a sexual relationship outside of marriage, and then uh, depicting this in a certain way. So, we live in a society today which is inundated with pornography. It's inundated with it. Now, pornography is nothing new. It's been around like forever and ever. Except it's more available now than it ever was. Some of you, I am sure, uh, maybe visited the ruins of Pompeii in Italy, in Naples. The real Naples, not, not this one. <laughs> And what they discovered on the walls preserved in the volcanic, volcanic ash, uh, pornography. Didn't know it was painted, painted on the walls. So those old uh, Roman uh, umbas, you know, they were drinking their wine, they were viewing pornography too on the walls of, of their villas. Today, it uh, is available to practically everyone. Because almost everyone has a computer or an iPhone or a iPad. And I'm told now by those who work in OBGEN that they use a form of them in their hands. <laughs> now we are told, we are told that uh, Pornography is not just something that the young are attracted to. Believe me, old father of them have been hearing confessions for a long time. <laughs> this ain't something that little junior comes and tells me about. This is something that even senior citizens have a problem with. So we're going to address this uh, issue today and what we can do about it. I'm sure that uh, most of us here at one time or other have viewed something for a graph. I'm going to let you in on something. I tried when I was about 13 years old. It was a candy store in the neighborhood. You go to the old candy stores, you go to the candy stores. Well, they had a penthouse and a Playboy on the top shelf. And it wants me to get to the top shelf. I had to step on the bottom shelf. And all of a sudden, the, the whole thing came tumbling down. But lo and behold, not only did the old magazines come tumbling down, but a whole bunch of index cards came tumbling down too. The guy that owned the candy store was a bookie. And boy, was he mad. He was mad. I got thrown out of there. Okay. So it's something that, you know, you think, uh, it's almost this, it's that temptation. It's that temptation that, uh, that all of us, all of us have to look at this stuff. And yet, that we, we know that it is not good. We know it's not good for us. Even you know, Jesus spoke about pornography. He said, oh, what Bible is he reading? Okay. Remember, Jesus says, if you lust in your heart, you have already committed adultery. If you lust in your heart, you have already committed adultery. That's what he's talking about. You see, we don't even have to go to the old Roman villa, or to the old candy store, or to the websites that carry pornography today, because our mind is a little Hollywood out there. And we're producing these films all the time. The problem with this is not only is it bad for our 
our souls, but it's also bad for our mental well-being and for our social well-being. Now, when Jesus speaks about lusting, of course, Jesus is always concerned, he's always concerned about the whole person, physically, mentally, and spiritually. What did Jesus know about pornography? Well, it's an addiction. It is an addiction, just like any other addiction that people might have. Now, I work at St. Matthew's house with people who have addictions to drugs and alcohol. But pornography is equal to drugs and alcohol in so far as once somebody begins to get involved with pornography, it's just like the drug and alcohol. It starts off with just a little bit. And then, all of a sudden, you need more and more of it. Because, now, I studied this at the University of Pennsylvania when I was doing my residency in neurosurgery. So, you believe that, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> in the brain, it's like if there's a doctor here, a doctor, you know, tell me if I got it right. Uh, there are what we call neurons. And neurons send messages to the brain, brain cells, and especially those pleasure areas in the brain. And after a while, the fix, whether it's the drugs, the alcohol, or the pornography, uh, begins to diminish. The satisfaction begins to diminish. And then we need, we need more of it. But the brain also begins to morph. The brain also begins to change. And so it does irreparable damage to people. It literally can ruin their lives. They tell us that our young people today between the ages of 17, uh, 12 and 17, 12 and 17, are getting more and more addicted to pornography. 12 and 17. Now imagine what this at that tender age is doing to a brain. And what is the long-term prognosis of this? This is what we have found thus far regarding addiction to pornography. Number one, it gives people a false sense of the human body. False sense of the human body. People in some instances think that they should look like a porn star. Secondly, what it does is it presents sex outside marriage. You might be wondering why. There are so many people just living together, shacking up, having casual affairs. Guaranteed, I guarantee you, you can probably chase, trace it back to some connection with pornography. Third, what it does is it places human sexuality in the most vulgar and violent terms. Vulgar and violent terms. I am told, I am told that in order to heighten the thrill, that we revert in pornography to more and more despicable and harmful actions. The latest I'm told is there is such a thing as choking. Choking. So that part of the sexual experience involves choking your partner until the person becomes unconscious. You go figure. And lastly, 
we are now told that in looking at divorce cases, over 50% of divorces can trace their divorce to pornography. That's how serious the situation is. Okay. So, as a church, we have to do something about it. They hear about Jesus cleansing the temple. St. Paul says the body is the temple of the Lord. The body is the temple of the Lord. And so we are called to cleanse our bodies of those things, especially that corrupt the soul. Pornography corrupts the soul. And Lent is a good time for us to begin to think about this and begin to, to work on this. Some of you may have young children at home. If you do, as a parent, you have a responsibility to make sure that your home, we call it a safe haven, is safe from pornography. If you are an older person, you too might have a problem. You have to make sure that your home is safe from this poison that is destructive to your soul and your relationship with those with whom you live. And if you're alone, that's where some of the greatest temptation comes from when people are alone to escape into a make believe world. You too need help to overcome this addiction and to overcome sin. What we have done as a church is to provide you with booklets that we hope that you will take home to read as to how you can make your home a safe place, how to make your life cleansed of the evil of pornography. They are in the Northwest small booklet. Please take one for family, one for family. And then there is a program that I'm going to highly recommend to you. And I used this program when I taught both at the seminary. Yes, seminarians have the problem too. I use it also with law school students. It's called Covenant Eyes. Covenant Eyes. And this is an online program that enables families or friends to help keep an eye on each other's viewing habits. It doesn't show what you're viewing, but it will tell someone who is your sponsor, just like AA, where we have a sponsor, it will tell your sponsor that you are viewing inappropriate material. And that's one of the ways that we help each other, and it's one of the ways that parents have to take responsibility for helping their children to avoid this very, very serious sin and threat to their mental and psychological well-being. There is an expression in the scripture it says, come from King of Aiden. Cain says to God, and God says, where is your brother? Am I my brother's keeper? Like, what do I have to do with, with him? If you're a parent, you are your children's keeper. If you live in a house together, you're married, you are your children's keeper. If you are a single person, you should find a friend to act as your sponsor to help you to overcome this addiction. In doing this, you will fulfill your obligation as a parent, husband, wife, or friend. You will help someone else to become a holy person, and you will make this Lent the most successful you ever had. God bless you.